Hey guys, welcome back. This episode, we'll be going over all of the asset work and getting everything we need into RPG Maker. To open RPG Maker MV and to start up a new project, all you have to do is press File and then New Project. Feel free to name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name mine Tutorial. And remember the Location tab. This is where the project will save to and we will be referring back to it to add the assets we make. So from here, we need to think about the main assets we need to make a project, which in our case are maps, sprites, portraits, and sound effects. And if you wish to read up any further on any of the asset details, I put the MV asset standards in the description. So the first thing to know where you actually get the Pokemon sprites themselves is the PMD sprite repository. This is where PMD spriters work to recreate the newer Pokemon in the PMD style, as well as to add more sprites onto existing Pokemon. For this tutorial, we're going to use Mudkip to make our first sprite sheet. But first, let's take a quick detour to see how sprites work in MV. Sprites in MV are stored in a 3x4 sprite sheet for each character, with a default dimension of 48x48 48 48 pixels per sprite. However, you can resize them as needed if you ensure all areas for sprites stay the same size as each other. Each character has walk cycles for four directions, down, left, right, and up with each cycle consisting of three frames and the default standing animation being the leftmost sprite. The default sprite can be changed in the event menu, but must be selected each time, so there's no way to set a default for this setting. You can have these files stored in a single 4x3 with the dollar sign prefix. However, I recommend storing it in the default way, which contains eight sprite sheets in a 4x2 manner. This way, alternative Pokemon actions can be stored along with the walk cycle in one file to make organization easier. Here are my personal recommendations for how to store sprites. For individual frames that you might want to slow down or speed up, make those take up all three slots of a walk cycle, or just whichever frame you use as a standing sprite. More often than not, this will be the most common type of action you implement, other than walking, of course. If you have an action that has multiple different directions, Put them all in the same 4x3 and line up their directions to what they would be for walking. And if they have a follow-up action that's also directional, put it in the next 4x3 on the sheet. The reason you want to do this is because RPG Maker selects which sprite you use based on which 4x3 you select and the direction. So having the only thing you change be the 4x3 you're using makes animating actions much easier sprites you want easily looped, put them in a walk cycle so we can take advantage of the built-in animation for walking. Now I recommend you do this very rarely since it's hard to select any individual frame of the walk cycle that's not the default slot. Plus you can just use the previous method for looped animation anyway, so just keep in mind whether or not you need to use an individual frame for anything. For miscellaneous sprites that don't have multiple directions, you can just throw a bunch of these on the same couple of 4x3s. Just be sure to correlate these as much as possible to a direction so it's intuitive to use when making scenes. Okay, so now you know the format of files, but now the question is, how do I actually make them? Well, go ahead and open your favorite image editing software. I will be using GIMP for this demonstration because it's free. Link in the description. You can either make a template file yourself and just know the math well enough if you want to manually store it at the size you want. However, for this mud kit, we're just going to use this template here. Now delve into the PMD sprites and grab all the image files you'd like to add for your Pokemon. Once they are all open in GIMP and you have a template open as well, it's time to move them over. Click on the rectangle tool and select the sprite you'd like to bring over and press Ctrl C to copy it. Then we are going to press Ctrl V and then Ctrl Shift N to paste it as a layer. Now it's just a matter of moving around images to conventions previously mentioned. And once it is to your liking, save the image and place it in your MB project slash image slash characters. Now I'll show you how to make portraits next. Portraits are much easier to work with than sprites. They are in a set format where they are organized in a 4x2 and are 144 by 144 pixels. So all you have to do is resize whatever picture you want and put it in its respective 144 by 144 slot. You can once again find these in the PMD sprite repository. And here's a little fun trick. If you want the individual images and you don't want them in a weird format, just drag the image off the website into a folder. Then after that, just drag them into GIMP and resize them with nearest neighbor and call it a day. Then to put it in the project, go to slash image slash faces in the project and put it there. Now that we have our guys, let's put them somewhere. 
For the most part, in RPG Maker MV, making custom tile sets isn't something that needs to be messed with. You can make a perfectly good series using the base maps in the game, and it would be just fine. However, these animations are Pokemon Mystery Dungeons, so it's worthwhile to know how to make basic ones for that purpose at least. So to find tiles as a Mystery Dungeons, you can go to Sprayer's Resource under Red Slash Blue Rescue Team, Explorers of Darkness and Time, and Explorers of Sky. Now, RPG Maker MV has its own custom formats for tile sets labeled A1 through A5, and then B, C, D, and E. We are going to use A2 for auto tiles, which is the simplest of the auto tilers. You may be asking yourself, why A2 when there's A1 through A5 just chilling there? Well, A1 is for animated tiles, A3 and A4's formats are too obscure, and A5 isn't an auto tiler. If you're seeing this format of auto tiles for the first time, it may be a little confusing, but once you know the format, it's a lot easier. Tile A is just used for the icon on the map maker. Tile B is used for interior corners in which each corner goes opposite in the direction that you'd expect. So if it's the bottom right corner of the tile, it would be the corner for an interior corner on the top left. Then tile C fills in the rest of the detail with the corners and center. So let's match this up with the temporal tower sprite sheet. For part A, you can really put whatever you want there, but I like to do the center tile upscaled for simplicity. Then for section B, we go with the normal sprite size for this configuration. And then for section B, we don't resize any of the tiles, keep them at their default size. Now take each of the corners and place them opposite of where they are on the PMD sprite sheet like this. And not to worry, even though it's one tile in RPG Maker MV, the PMD tile sets are half the size so they will easily fit. Then for section C, we go back to the top of the set of tiles. We're going to want to fill out a 4x4 instead of a 3x3, so in order to do that, double the center tiles, but keep the corners the same. By the end, it should look something like this. Now that you've transferred the tiles, transfer the walls, or vice versa. The other method is to use B, C, D, and E. They are all structured in a similar way, with each file being 768 by 768 with each tile being 48 by 48. One thing to keep in mind is that each 8 by 16 of sprites is its own column, so make sure your sprites don't overlap between those two sections. To add this to the project, go to slash image slash tilesets and put it there. Then go into RPG Maker MV and open your project. Go to database, then to tilesets, and either add the sprites you want onto an existing tileset, or create a new one. Now that'll be all the asset work finished, and we'll move on to sound effects. For sound effects, all you need is the audio file, but it needs to be converted into an OGG format for RPG Maker to read it. So go ahead and open the sound effect in your audio editor of choice, mine being Audacity. Go ahead and cut down the empty audio space if there is any, and save it as an OGG. Then to put it in RPG Maker, go to slash audio slash SE, and drag the file in there, and it's added to the project. This will be all for this part. Stay tuned for the next one where I'll show you how to start animating the characters.